I'm a fifth generation horseman. Uh, my great grandfather was a horseman. My dad was a jockey. My grandmother ran barrel horses. I mean, on down the line. Uh, I roped and, and did everything up until 2008. And then uh, my grandparents made me get a job 2008 thing. And I ended up working with our farrier. I just never quit. Oh, the farrier. A fair is a relatively newer term for what I do. I used to be, would be called the blacksmith um, because I heat up shoes and shape them to the horse's feet and, and will uh, build things with iron out of a fire. So that makes you the blacksmith. There is a spot on the horse's foot that is the center of rotation. And that's where the digit can move with the least amount of leverage right around there. I try to place a shoe around that center of rotation so that the horse can move its foot without the appliance or the extra excessive hoof that it has being in its way of its limb and its biomechanics. So um, there's, there's the placement of the shoe, which is important, and then there's the shape of the shoe. The, the hoof capsule is, is made up of a lot of straight lines and radiuses. And I try to mimic those straight lines and radiuses, which correlate to anatomy on the hoof. But I try to mimic those straight lines and radiuses in my horseshoe so that I can apply it with nails safely and that it can be secure and healthy for the hoof. Um, improperly placed horseshoes can, can bring damage to the horse. It can bring damage to the hoof wall. It can uh, create excessive forces on tendons and ligaments. So I try to manage the placement of my horseshoes and the application of my horseshoes in a way that does no harm. I'm a really tall five, five, maybe five, six, and most of the horses I work with are, you know, 900 to 1200 pounds. And I've found that it's a lot easier to get along with them than it is to subdue them. You know, they could kill me in an instant. And so in learning to catch animals that don't want to be caught or work with animals that don't particularly want to be worked with, it's uh, allowed me to kind of develop a way to communicate with them to get what I need to get done. Um, and these, these animals all have a personality and a spirit, so I think just working with them individually is, is how I go about it, you know. Um, just treating them all as little personalities and, and getting along. Uh, so I had been working shoeing horses, like, just seemed like six years straight with no time off, just working. And uh, I had a little mini Aussie. And so I've always wanted a Border Collie. And then I found a video of a dog that went like a half a mile for sheep. I watched that video and I was just enamored with sending a dog a great distance for sheep. I, w I just became enamored with herding. And with horses, they communicate off of pressure and release. Like uh, if you push on the horse's left side, they should go right. And you know, the opposite way. Well, horse dogs react the same way. And their social structure is the same way as far as like in a pack and alpha, betas and all that. And so like they're, the way they communicate is the same way the horse. So I have kind of fell into it. So I took a vow of poverty back in 2007 and I donate the money that I, I acquire to God. And with that money that I am able to make by working and shoeing horses and doing dogs, I'm able to help other people. I'm able to help what God wants. So being able to be a part of that with doing something that I truly love is, is very special.